Uh, Fido Master John Curtis from Australia and today I'm going to highlight an achievement of the great world chess champion Wilhelm Steinitz. Now Wilhelm Steinitz was not only just a great world chess champion but he was unbeaten in match play for 32 years from 1862 to 1894. Okay, now we're going to look at the, we're going to look at one of his famous games where he won a brilliancy prize. It was in the great London 1862 tournament against the very capable player Mongredian. Okay, so uh, this is the game here. I'm, I've got it on chess analysis board, and I uh, will go back go back to the um, beginning of the game. You've seen the end. Um, Right, and we'll, we'll go through the game slowly. Now, uh, Wilhelm Steinitz is white, and he plays e4. His opponent replied with d5, and he, re he took the pawn off, and a Mongredian recaptured. This is a, Steinitz is very aggressive in this game, as you'll see. He played knight to c3 to chase the queen away, and from this very moment on, he never stopped uh, trying to seize the initiative and moving forward, ever forward, until he finally achieves his goal. The black played queen to d8. I suppose it's a sign of the, uh, of the game. He went backwards. But uh, queen to a5 is a common move in that position. Uh, and Steinitz plays d4, or Wilhelm, he plays d4. And um, his opponent replies e6. And uh, honestly, frankly, I can't get over that fact that uh, for 32 years as one of the leading players or one of the greatest players in the world, he never lost a match play. Uh, he never lost ma a match. Anyway, uh, knight to f3. And uh, you wonder, oh, how can you win a brilliancy prize out of this? It's just such a dead even sort of game. But uh, uh, he proceeds, he plays bishop to d3 to uh, have his bishop focused on the black king side. And black plays bishop e7, solid move, and prepares to castle, as you do. White castles and black castles. Now, he plays bishop e3. Now, I often play this variation. But I usually play queen e2 and knight to e4, and it's very, very slow to um, get uh, much of an initiative. It's very difficult, you, easy to get an even game. But he played bishop e3, I've never seen that move before I, I watched this game. Anyway, b6 is played by Mongredian, and now this is where um, Steinitz never takes a step backward. Uh, bishop b7, which is very logical. It controls the long diagonal, and perhaps we, he can swap a piece off and relieve the pressure uh, uh, via the d5 square. And um, Steinitz replies f4. Straight away, he wants to support his knight in the center, and he wants to um, uh, create more space for his major piece, the, uh, the castle on f1 to f3. And you'll see that uh, occur. So um, black plays knight in the b5 to d7. He's completed his development. He's cleared his back rank. And one would think that he's gained an even gain, uh, an even position here. And now Steinitz quite quietly plays queen to e2. Clears the the, um, the rooks to coordinate with each other along the back along his back rank. And now this is where. Um, it, it gets interesting. He plays, black plays knight to d5. I suppose he's looking for a move, but maybe c5 would have been better than what he played to try to undermine the, um, the, the white central position, right? And now, uh, uh, Wilhelm Steinitz, he just recaptures this, and Mongredia recaptures with the pawn. Um, well, I think if he took with the bishop, he was frightened of being belted all over the place with c4. Anyway, um, now Steinitz realises that black's bishop seems to be out of the game. 
right? It's only virtually uh, supporting the, the D pawn, and that's it. And so he brings up, he lifts, he does a rook lift. That's what we call a rook lift, rook to f1 to f3. And he eyes um, the uh, bishop takes pawn check, right? So maybe rook checks and queen over. Anyway, Mongridian says, oh, I'll have none of that. So he, he blocks, Mongridian blocks the, um, the, uh, the uh, bishop takes pawn check by playing f there. And, and he probably wants to just play, if he is allowed to, he'd like to play just g6 and knight to f3, right? And um, knight to e5 and gain a good position. But... Wilhelm Stein says none of so doesn't he's not, he's not he's not into that sort of play. Anyway, so uh, Mongredian plays g6. It's a logical move again, planning knight to f6 and knight to e5 to block out that ter terribly dangerous white bishop. And now Stein realizes with the bishop on b7 uh, and the pawn on d5. And black unable to get a diagonal uh, um, attack against his king, he's free to open up on the white squares and attack the black position. And that's what he does. He's throwing the kitchen sink at the guy. And so he recaptures. Pawn takes pawn. And one would think, well, uh, what do you play here? Oh, queen takes pawn looks good. Um, but in actual fact, that's probably not a good move because of knight to f6 and um, he, perhaps there's a way to escape, I'm not sure. But our Wilhelm Steiners, he doesn't muck around. This is why he won the brilliancy prize. Bang! Rook takes h7. Just straight, just straight into him. This gives the rook away and he says, well, I'm coming for you. And you think, well, hold on a minute. What, what's, what has White got? Black's thinking he's got, well, he's got a rook down there. But he, Black's thinking, well, if I take his knight and then take his rook, well, he hasn't got much at all. So he takes the knight. He thinks, well, I'll take the rook. I'll take, I'll, I'll take off all the pieces you're throwing at me. Doesn't affect Steins. He just takes back with the pawn. And then he takes the rook. Black's thinking, well, whoopee do is I'm doing all right here. And now comes the next move. Queen takes pawn. Queen takes g pawn. Threatening queen takes pawn check on g6 and mate. Now, it's here that, um, uh, it's here that uh, Mongredian just looks at the position. He says, well, I'm going to try to hold all this and I'm going to try to escape. So he plays rook g8. And then bang, in comes a check. Right? And his opponent plays king to g7. And Stein says, well, queen takes pawn check, king there, rook check. And Stein just says, well, I'm going to finish this the most beautiful way I can. And he gives him a check there, right? Queen to h6 check. There's not much choice. There's only one move. And now, queen checks again. And now, if the king goes up, he's trying to escape. He's trying to run away. But now the queen checks again and cuts him off and forces him to go back to the black square. And what does that do? That allows the castle to come into the game. Okay. And so I think he's playing with him like a cat with a mouse because now he plays in there and he, he, he seems to be um, bottled in there, but he's, he's still got some sort of game. Or, but then queen to e6. You can see the bar on the, right hand, on the left hand side of the, uh, the analysis board. The bar is indicating a massive uh, in advantage for white. It's just deadly with all these pieces. Anyway, he plays rook g7, and he says, well, oh, baby, I'll let you do do your best. If you win, you win. And he takes, he plays bishop. He doesn't even take the pawn with check. No, because he's frightened the guy's going to escape. So he plays bishop to g, g5. Puts more pressure on. 
So, and it's, this, this is a key move because it allows a very, very brilliant checkmate. So he plays queen d7, he says, well, maybe I can still run away. And white says, oh, no, you can't. And he plays bishop takes pawn check, right? Now, I wonder if he could have taken with the queen and made it even look just as pretty. No, he could, wouldn't work. Anyway, he played bishop takes pawn check. And the rook took, and he played queen takes check. So he tries to run away. But then now we can see the beauty of the bishop to g5 move. And the rook comes thundering down. And the bishop can't take it off because he puts himself in check. And there's only one move. Queen to e8. And white plays queen takes queen check mate. And no wonder that won the brilliancy prize at the great tournaments. One of, so it's hit, listed in history as one of the great, great tournaments. London, 1862. Um, so anyway, with that, I'm just going to leave you with the thoughts of the great Wilhelm Steinitz. I'll say it again. He was unbeaten in match play for 32 years, from 1862 to 1894. And I just think that's absolutely amazing. What a great, great world chess champion. Okay. Bye for now.